You know how they say th things come in threes, good things, bad things? Well, even in the crypto world, they do. Morgan Stanley joining Citigroup and Goldman Sachs, now the third with plans to offer Bitcoin trading to clients. The banking giant reportedly has the infrastructure in place to launch, we don't know when, but launch Bitcoin swap trading as soon as it sees enough demand from institutions. No date has been announced yet for this new crypto offering, but that counts as a vote of confidence, and it's helping the original digital currency knock a second day of gains upward here. We're up $164 for $6,479 per Bitcoin. But for those of you who got into Bitcoin early, say when it was, I don't know, $100 per coin, you're still in the major money, right? Because now it's 6000 plus. Well, not if you forgot your password. This has actually been happening. Millions of dollars worth of Bitcoins inaccessible because owners can't remember their password or they lost the hard drive on which the password was stored. The complicated string of numbers and letters gone and fingerprint and retina scans, those early Bitcoin password technologies did not offer those. But now the maybe never forget your password might be here. DNA. Carver is a cutting-edge molecular cold storage data vault developed by a group of asset managers and biotechnologists. Their way could send all other data securing methods to the highway if they're right. To the man behind Carver, founder and CEO of Michel Vuillon, here in a Fox Business exclusive. Uh, those stories of people forgetting their password or losing, uh, losing their hard drive is just unbelievable. And, and now you say that won't happen with what you have. So, I mean, if you look at crypto in general, for all these institutions to come in, the biggest barrier is going to be custody, right? So it, it's not a, a sustainable solution to have everyone worrying about all these passwords. So our, our kind of technology, what we are saying is, look, it's insane to have tens of millions of paper wallets, which is just the code written down on a piece of paper, mm -hmm. or all these offline servers. We can condense all of that using an age-old kind of biotechnology method which is synthetic DNA. So we basically convert the binary code behind these passwords into the letters of A, T, C, and G, and then essentially print them, which is something that, believe it or not, has been happening for a very long time. What is in your hand? So this is about a quadrillion copies of a digital wallet. Okay, hand this to me. There is a tiny droplet of water, right? Or, well, is it water? I don't know what it it's is. It's actually called a TE buffer, but okay. essentially it's just water. Can you see that? Can we take a tight shot in there? Um, so you've got the actual password stored, and w what happens if I lose this or drop this? So what we're doing is like we're going to the funds and the banks, and we're working with them to develop a little bit of a redundancy. They're mm -hmm. naturally incurring redundancies just in this. Again, this is a quadrillion copies. Um, but we can secure this in a way that's what's called air-gapped. So one of the issues with all of these digital currencies and by the way, this is about digital assets in general in the mm -hmm. future. Not just Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies. Th that could be kind of a frothy layer on the overall technology of blockchain. But eventually, everything, in my opinion, will be tokenized of some sort, right? So every transaction, whether it's your mortgage, whether it's your house, whether it's a credit default swap, will be kind of streamlined using this technology and could be represented by a code. And so, again, it's all about consolidating those codes and keeping them offline when you're not using them, mm -hmm. and then retrieving them when now, you need them. Now, what happens if you want to gift this, or, or eventually somebody dies and th they, they don't take that password with them, right? I mean, can it go to their heirs? That's so, been some of the problem with the Bitcoin passwords. 100%. And so what we're trying to build are the products and services around this mm -hmm. to even be able to access information from this in a way that generations can always access Can it, it be hacked? It can't be hacked in this instance. We, not only do we encrypt it, but it's just totally offline, and there's no, there's no hardware that's becoming obsolete. There's no need for updates or anything like that. Vishal, this is straight out of uh, Brave New World and <laughs> Dale Hennessy winning an Oscar for those where you inserted something into the bloodstream. Absolutely fascinating. Thank you Good very much. Good luck to you. Thank, Thank you. you so much.